Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of this business continuity and disaster recovery series. Today, we're going to be talking about Keybolt. Specifically, we're going to talk about the disaster recovery options and how Keybolt or Asher Keybolt handles the disaster recovery of a vault. So we're going to start with the basics and then we're going to jump into a little bit more of the advanced topics. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't done so, please like this video, subscribe to the channel and let's keep going and let's keep learning more about business continuity and disaster recovery. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the basics. So there's not much that you're going to have to do when it comes to disaster recovery with Azure Key Vault, because a lot of those things are already pre-built in the software, as you are going to be able to see. There's two different options that you have when you choose Key Vault. The first one is the standard vault. A standard vault is the one that gives you a certain level of access, certain level of features. This one does not have any pre-built DR capabilities. And when I say DR, I'm talking about disaster recovery. And then there is also the premium tier. The premium is the one that gives you the built-in capabilities that we're going to be talking about today. So when we talk about Azure Key Vault, the basics. Key Vault is the service that allows you to store secrets. And when we talk about secrets, we're talking about usernames. We're going to, we're going to talking about passwords. And I'm not talking about, you know, saving your username and password for applications such as Facebook or Instagram. No, I'm talking about saving username and passwords to databases, for example. So if you have an application that is connecting to a database, one of the things that you have to do is you have to specify the username and password to be able to connect to this database. Here is a code sample of how this would typically would, would take effect. When you have, say, for example, a PHP, and again, I'm using PHP just because it's just a quick example. You can be using .NET, you can be using PHP, you can be using pretty much any of the languages, but the process is pretty much the same. You still have to provide the authentication for this application to be able to log into the database. And as you can see here, you would specify um, the, the username and password right in the configuration file. And then this configuration file would host not only the username and password, but also the port number and things like that. This is something that needs to be done. And then on the bottom, under the config.local, you, you do specify the username and password. So the point is that the username and password is going to be stored on the local system in a text file. And this is typically a problem when it comes to security, because if anyone gets access to your system, they're going to be able to find this information very quickly. It's not very difficult to find because it's stored in text files in your system. So when it comes to secrets, you want to store them in a way that if somebody gets access to your system, they're not going to be able to find them on the local computer in a text file. So this is when Azure Key Vault or systems similar to Key Vault come into the picture where you store the secrets in Key Vault. And when you need to access those secrets, all you have to do is you have to specify the endpoint like, like it shows here, Key Vault, and it's pointing to HTTPS, my Key Vault, which is the name of your vault, dot vault dot Azure dot net. And then you specify the secret name that you're going to be taking from this key vault. Now, you, of course, you still have to have some level of security. You still have to authenticate to the key vault. But the, the key here is that you, you're not storing the, the secrets in a text file on the system itself. This is what key vault does. This is what it gives you. There's a lot more to it. I'm not going to get into it too much because this is a video about disaster recovery. I'm just touching the basics just so in case you're not familiar with the service, at least now you know the basics and how it works. Then the next thing that you have to worry about is, well, okay, I have 200 secrets or 300 secrets, or I have a, a big database of secrets that my applications rely on. How do I ensure that these secrets are going to be available in case of a disaster? 
So this is when we start talking about the disaster recovery of Keyvolt. Now, Keyvolt has, like I said, two different types of tiers, the standard tier and the premium tier. The standard tier doesn't, doesn't have any built-in capability. What it has is a database, for lack of a better term, and you can replicate that or you can export the secrets and you can store them in a different region manually and you can pretty much do that if you if, if the region ever fails you can recover from that backup that you have now this is a manual process again this is for standard tier there is also the premium tier and this is where we start talking about the data replication features and this is where it's, where this information comes into the picture. The way that the Key Vault replicates your data depends on the specific region that you're in. So for most Azure regions that are paired, and here's another thing about paired regions. If you haven't watched the other videos, please do so where I go into the storage and what is, what is a paired region. A paired region is something that Microsoft sets up automatically where the data replicates. So if you're using a paired region, the pair region, which is at least 150 miles away, is the one where Key Vault replicates the data to. So if you remember from another video, or if you haven't watched it, please do so. If you have, say, West US 3 replicating to Central US, which is a pair region, then if you're using Azure Key Vault Premium, then the data is being replicated automatically to that region. So let's just say you have your Key Vault in West US 3. The data is being replicated automatically with the premium to the pair region, which is you know central US. And that's done automatically. There's nothing you need to do. You just use it and automatically the data gets replicated. Now, what happens if a, if a failed, if, if the region fails? Let's go ahead and take a look at that. In the rare event that an entire Azure region becomes unavailable, the requests that you make in the Azure Key Vault in that region are automatically routed to the failover region, to the secondary region. When the primary region becomes available again, the requests are, are routed back to the primary region. So what we see here that Microsoft is using the replication that GRS-RA for the replication of Key Vault. So when, you, when you're using Key Vault, it is automatically being replicated to the secondary region. If the, fail re, if, the re, if the region fails, the primary region fails, you will immediately have access to the read or you will have access to read the secrets in the secondary region. You don't have to do anything. It does it automatically for you. Um, but it is in read-only mode until the whole full failover takes place. And then you're going to be able to write new secrets to that region. During the failover, right here, this is the key. During the failover, your key vault is in read-only mode. The following operations are supported in read-only mode. During the failover, you won't be able to make changes to the Key Vault properties. You won't be able to change access or firewall configuration. And after the failover or the failback, then you will have read and write requests to you and they all become available again. So the key here is just to remember that there's a few minutes where you're only gonna have read access to the secrets. It means you just have to pay attention to make sure that you, re you, you see in the portal when that failover finishes, because until then, you only have read access to those secrets. After that, you should have read write access. This is during the failover and also the fail back. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna talk about is what if you have private endpoints. For Key Vault, Microsoft Key Vault manages the failover for you automatically. You don't have to create two different private endpoints in two different regions. Azure Key Vault creates that for you or takes care of that. Now, if you look at the configure, if you look at the documentation here, it says if you're using private link to connect to your Key Vault, it may take up to 20 minutes 
for the connection to be reestablished in the event of a region failover. So what this means is that Microsoft will take care of the replication, Microsoft will take care of the, of the failover, but if you're using private endpoints, it can take up to 20 minutes for that failover to take place. This is because of DNS that needs to be updated and all the internal zones and all of that, but Microsoft will take care of that and you don't have to worry about it. Just keep in mind that for your RTO, your RPO, and all those little details that we talked about in other videos, you have to make sure that you remember that is 20 minutes, up to 20 minutes. And this is very important because you have to document that. Um, there is no easy way to test it. Unfortunately, there is no test button, test fail over, test fail back for Key Vault. Uh, this is just done uh, internally. So there is no easy way for you to test the automatic. Now, if you decide to use the standard uh, tier of the, of the service and you decide to create it manually, then at that point, then, you know, it's up to you. You can do a test fail over, you can do a test fail back. You can do pretty much anything because you're not relying on Microsoft to test, uh, to take care of the DNS and to take care of the replication. But if you have the standard version, you can do an export of the secrets. When you do an export, you can save them to a, uh, to a storage account that could be in a separate region. And if in case of a fail over, then what you need to do is you need to restore the secrets in a different region. You create another key vault in a different region. Typically the the steps are you backup or export your secrets, uh, you put security around it, you store them in a storage account in a different region, you create another key vault in that region, and it, when there is a failover that needs to take place, then you restore the secrets onto that vault, and then you start using that vault. Now, it is up to you to set up the DNS, it is up to you to set up pretty much everything, because at that, at that point, it's all manual and you would have to do that. And like I said, this video is gonna be short because the capabilities are pretty straightforward for the premium. Now the standard is a little bit different, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If there's anything that I missed, please leave it in the comment section down below. And again, thank you so much for watching this video until the end. And until next time, take care.